Wow, happy victory Sunday. Yesterday, the Lions demonstrate a dominant win over the Broncos. And by like dominant, I mean Napoleon Bonaparte, which I haven't seen the new movie yet. I definitely got to go see it, but dominated. Dan Campbell absolutely showing Sean Payton what he is able to do as the head coach, the pupil becoming the master, kind of like Dr. Strange when he moves on and he's like, watch me, Jody Foster, right? I believe that was Joe. Anyways, uh, yesterday was awesome. I was at the field. In fact, shout out to two subscribers uh, between Chris and Olivia. Picture here. Bing! You like that sound effect? That's radio, baby. Chris and Olivia, actually, interestingly enough, I'm walking into the stadium and Olivia heard my voice which is wild and was like, oh my God, and then found me and was like, that's Jay. And then thank God, my wife also has bad ears. She was like, somebody just said your name, followed by Let's Talk Lions, got to meet him. It was awesome. What a game to be at. So thank you, Chris. Thank you, Olivia. Always fun to see subscribers in the wild, especially outside the stadium before a humongous W over the Denver Broncos, 17 to 42. This game to me, Huge. Now, we know that the Lions haven't lost back-to-back games so far this year. Uh, Really, whenever we lose, the next game is a huge bounce-back game. That's what we needed to see. And coming into this game, I wanted to see the offense tear it up. Absolutely tear it up. But I also needed to see something from defense. And boy, did we see the defense show up. Listen, Denver's a good squad. Denver's a good squad. They have been on a tear. They were 6-1 and one coming into this game. And at this point now, obviously hitting that 6-2, and two, they're fighting for a division. That defense is great. Our offense just outmatched them. In fact, so much goes towards the coaching in this game. Ben Johnson dialing up some great plays. Dan Campbell holding down the fourth defensively. Aaron Glenn, I don't care if you don't want to hear it, did a phenomenal job coaching this team up against Russell Wilson, stopping the run. Yeah, there were a few big chunk plays where they were able to get it to Jerry Judy, whatnot. Doesn't matter. Lions defense found a way. Vilder, huge pickup. Getting Vilder onto this squad, giving him some reps right now. I love it. He was in some big plays. Fatu Melafanwu snagging uh, that fumble, forcing the fumble on Russell Wilson. Bugs picking that up, trucking it back. Dude, what a game to be at. Five of the six touchdowns took place in the end zone that we were sitting in. I mean, we were up in like section 124, so we could we were pretty much on like the 15 yard line. Um, but seeing the Amon Ross St. Brown flip in the in the end zone, Sam Laporta over and over again, Jameer Gibbs, like Goff had a great game. 24 for 34, 278 yards, and five TDs. Like that's a bounce back game after what was an abysmal showing in Chicago. I ain't gonna defend it. That showing in Chicago all around, abysmal. Whereas Russell Wilson, 18 for 32, 223 yards, one TD. Uh I mean the, uh, the the Broncos couldn't get anything going. They could not cook. They had no oil in the pan. However, Jameer Gibbs, 11 carries, 100 yards. St. Brown had a day, 7 receptions, 112 yards. Sam Laporta obviously had a day, 5 receptions, 56 yards, 3 TDs. He's a guy who constantly, consistently is open in the end zone. Now, I am going to say this, Lions fans. I said it back in the summer. I said it back in the summer. The day that that Ben Johnson said, hey, Carolina, I don't want to be a head coach. In fact, I'm taking my, my name out of the head coaching ring. He said, I don't want to do anything with this. I want to, I want to see this through with Goff in Detroit. That day I sat there, I wiped sweat from my brow, followed by, I said, that man is going to be the head coach of the Los Angeles Chargers. Now, I'm not here trying to toot my own horn. I'm not here trying to pull a trumpet out of my uh, Hermione's bag on my, my side. But uh, here comes the friggin' horn. And I'm getting ready to bless some notes here. It really feels like that is where Ben Johnson is going to go after this season. I think you put Ben Johnson in that offense with Justin Herbert as the head coach really... Listen, head coach's job is a lot different than just being an OC, but I think he could dial up a a tremendous, tremendous season with the Chargers. So Lions fans everywhere, be prepared. As Scar once said, I do believe that he will be the head coach of the Chargers. I hate it. 
I don't want to say it, but dang, Ben Johnson knows what he's doing. And yeah, now there's been two years of film on our offense. That's what, I remember Sean Payton saying that coming into this game. He was like, hey, there's two years of film on this team. Like, we're ready. No. No, you were not. No, you were not. So, Ben Johnson, that's my guess as to where he's going. But hey, yesterday with thine own eyes, I saw the boys come out and trump this Broncos team that was on a tear. It was beautiful. This puts the Lions in a beautiful position for the division. Playoffs first, then the division. Destiny is in our own hands. It's really, at this point, if either the Rams or Seattle lose, Rams today, Seattle tomorrow, Seattle's the more likely as they're playing Philadelphia, the Lions clinch a playoff spot. Followed by, on Christmas Eve, Sunday next week, Christmas Eve, the Lions could clinch the division, their first division berth in 30 years. Man, it was so close to being at home. It was so close to being this game. If we just didn't poop the bed against Chicago, I would have stormed the field last night. I would have stormed the friggin' field, gone right to jail. Do not pass go. Do not collect $200. Go right to jail. Monopoly. I haven't played Monopoly in quite some time. Yesterday with my own eyes, here's what I'm going to tell you. Jared Goff looked phenomenal. The running back squad looked phenomenal. Jameer Gibbs, the tandem between Gibbs and Montgomery, is just, when they're on, man, those guys are on. And people who were ripping our first two picks this year, Brad Holmes did a phenomenal job this draft. This squad, we hit our turbulence. We had four weeks, of uh, five weeks of you win this game, you lose this game. You should have lost that game, but you win it. Then you lose, then you win. We've had a turbulent five weeks. I would rather that turbulence take place in the middle of the season than right now at the end. That looked like a playoff caliber team. Yesterday looked like a playoff caliber team. That's the team you want finishing the stretch, going into playoffs. The defense finding themselves finally. The offense back on track and on a roll. You want that. We are headed upward and onward heading into the playoffs. That's what you need. You want your turbulence in the middle if you're going to have it at all. People that were jumping ship, there's no more life rafts. They're all gone because you took them with you. Now you're just floating in the Atlantic. Why? I told you, don't abandon ship. Go down with the Titanic. Anyways, that's all I got to say about yesterday. Uh, the Lions can clinch a playoff spot with either a Rams loss, Seattle loss. So let's hope for it. And uh, if any of them are going to happen, it's it's probably Seattle. But uh, yeah, that is it. That is it for today. Drop your thoughts in the comments. That's it. Okay. Took a nice deep breath. I think I'm going to get some coffee because boy, am I tired.